but I've never really gone in depth about their history and what makes them, you know, the women they are today. And this is basically a, a pretty cool, I think interesting enough talk about the history of Asia. There's about well, only 2,000 Asia left in Japan. While in their heyday, which would have been in the 1930s, there was 80,000. So that's quite a decline. And like it says here, a party of the geisha in a tea house is likely to cost you 2,000 euro an hour. And that's not just for, uh, that's just for the tea house. To hire the geisha would be another about 2,000 euro. And, oh yes, now I told you that the very first May uh, geisha for men. Well today now you can still see men playing the roles of geisha, but only in things like the Uchi Theatre. And this is a clip. How, about, how many people here hands up have seen members of Geisha? Yeah, do you know the member scene where um, Sayuri, she dances the snow dance? Well, this is actually, this scene here is what they basically stole the entire dance from this guy's dance. And the entire dance is about this heron who dies and she ends up in the different rings of hell, which is like. Japanese version of hell, and when she's in hell, there's like cuts on this kimono that are red, she gets cut constantly by the demons in hell, and that's what this dance is interpreting. They were then fitted with padded undergarments before the kimono. Oidan kimono were more colorful than the geishas for a reason. They wanted to attract more attention for business, and that glamour was very good for business. The kimono is held in place with a rope before being tied with the first obi, and then a second one. It's really tight, and an outer layer with more padding. The taiyu, the top-ranked oidan, had even more elaborate layers 